What's up and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I am so excited because today I'm gonna to be doing a hair transformation on somebody who has virgin hair. Like how lucky am I? And I'm even more lucky because her hair is literally down to her ass. It's super freaking long and we're gonna cut it off. We're gonna cut off all of her hair and we're gonna give her some highlights, some color. She's never done anything like this before. I'm super excited that she came to me and to the salon to do this for her. I'm just like, honestly, I'm just ecstatic because like when does somebody with virgin long ass hair like this come and land in your chair? I'm excited to kind of see exactly what she wants but overall we're gonna go for some like natural highlights basically she still wants to look just like herself just a little brightened up you know, little pops of here and there so I'm excited and I'm even more excited to chop off this hair because even though her hair is gorgeous long really healthy by the way I think it's gonna be really kind of cool just to kind of liven it up a little bit it's just kind of nice sometimes to just have a brand new start to your hair journey and to your just look so I'm excited that we're gonna do this so before we get started though Make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on all notifications so you don't miss a video. Now let's go ahead and get started. Before we get started, let's take a look at the canvas that we're working with. She is a natural level four virgin hair all the way down her back. Medium density, medium texture, and I'm so excited she chose me to add dimension. She wants to overall still look like herself, just with added highlights, something super low maintenance that she's not gonna have to come in to the salon so frequently. But take a look at how long this hair is. So I'm excited, we're gonna be donating some of her hair. But before we jump right into exactly what the prep work is, I'm gonna show you what I do to Get some phone content. Oh, there's 45. Oh, actually, that's nice. It'd really it'd be a really good side by side. But I don't know, like, how I'd be able to fit it in on the side by side split. Go ahead. <laughs> get your get your content. Get all the content. I can't wait to get the after content. I know. Me too. Show them how you swoop. Oh, okay. Let's do the swoop. Okay. Let's do the swoop. So you start on top. Uh -huh. Lisa taught me this. Uh-huh. Down, come out. And, and swoop. Yeah. <laughs> That's how you do transitions. <laughs> now let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to chop this hair off first. Her goal was to get a length that was similar to mine, a little bit past her shoulders. And the best way that I find to cut the hair, so that way I have a pretty even canvas to, to work with when I go back in and actually final detail it, and yes, I'm on my knees. I just put in two rubber bands side by side and that way we're able to donate it. So I made sure that it was long enough that we're able to donate. I usually like to do at least eight to 10 inches and that's exactly what we got from her. So I'm so excited to donate this bad boy. And if you're wondering, I'm using the Pai Mei shears from Hattori Hanzo. I'll link those down in the description. What you using? Oh, are we, are we at like chin angle here? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going up. <laughs> Wait, I didn't really... It's probably because the legs. Oh, I'm an idiot. There you go. There you go. Woo! Check it out, man. Okay. Check it out, man. There we go. Right. There we go. What are we doing? What are we doing? So I decided I'm going to do kind of like a global highlight on her. Um, very minimal in the back, but we're going to go in with monochrome 7GV. Ooh. I think I'm going to mix this up with 40 ball. So, 40? Yeah. You crazy. Why are you doing 40? <laughs> Why? Uh, so, Kenner color is low ammonia, number one. And number two, I am working with pretty dark hair. So I want to say she's about a level four. Yeah. So, since we're going from a four to a seven, 40 ball is going to lift three to four levels. And this, this line in particular is, or this collection in the color line, is a little bit more opaque in coverage, meaning it's like flatter in color, but it's still high shine and very reflective. So that's why I'm using this. And basically I'm gonna do some teasy lights throughout. So not only am I gonna put this in, this is gonna be like her base, but I'm also gonna add in some little pops of lightener with Beyond Bond. And then we're gonna do a full glaze. And I'm thinking, depending on how the lightener turns out, we're gonna do 7B with a little bit of 6BC for a global tone. Yummy, let's get started. So in case you're wondering, yes, we have a bunch of different types of lighteners in different containers. This just helps us keep everything a lot more organized. 
And that way we know exactly how much we have left and what we need to refill. So what I'm mixing up here is her color. This is mixed up one to one with 40 volume. And then for the lightener, I'm using Beyond Bond at a one to two mixing ratio with 10 volume developers. So since she's virgin, I don't need a ton of lift. For her application, I decided I'm gonna do a full highlight starting at the occipital and I'm gonna work with some diagonal sections throughout. So very typical of my V pattern and then horizontal sections all throughout the back, making it really simple with added pops of the lightener. So I'm not too focused on adding so much lightener to her as I am the color. So the color with 40 vol is my primary shade. I'm gonna attempt to do one big ass section. Nice. A big in. Is that a big in? A big in. Look, there's nothing to tease. I know she has no like uh, new hairs, no vellus, no nothing. I don't even think that's gonna work. <laughs> she literally has like no hair. I mean, you have hair. You have like, it's like usually we tease this and it, there's hair to tease. There's like hardly any hair to tease. No, because her hair is all completely healthy and grown out. All right, so change of plans. Smaller, Smaller section. Smaller section. Yeah. Oh my god. So we're gonna go. There you go. Do that, big boy. Yeah. Maybe get a smaller comb, like a tighter, tighter teeth. Yeah. Or I could just get the coup board. We've got the goods. All right, let's try it down here. Oh, that was a good one. That works, right? Yeah. There we go. Oh. I already jacked up my whole tension here. Yeah. Gotta make sure you get all the insides there. Mm. Saturation's key, huh? That's right. Nothing's worse than a spotty looking highlight. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Oh, there we go. Much better. So that's the only negative I would say is like by teasing it from the bottom, it makes it really narrow on top. Yeah. That's why I went with the smaller, the smaller boards. Oh no, the, yeah, the smaller board and then the smaller um, section. Oh, yeah, because it gets so tight to the top. Yeah, it hates me. <laughs> All right. Oh yeah, do you like my nails? Oh, look One at coat, those. two coats. Look at those. It's it's called ombre. <laughs> it's a new style of ombre. All right, so now we have all of the kinks worked out. I had no idea that cutting this much off on virgin hair was going to give me such a problem with teasing. So this is why I had to bust out the coup board. So basically, I just started out with two highlights or foliage highlights with the color on those first two sections there. So this is what's sitting right all around the occipital area. And the whole idea was just to add dimension with the color. I'm not looking for a ton of brightness, but as soon as I'm done applying these, I will call them low lights because I'm using the color, I'm going to put in a really tiny baby light right on top of this. But you can see each of my subsections are about an inch to an inch and a half wide. So there's lots of depth still left in there. And the whole reason for that is because I don't want to really change up her color, her natural color too much. I'm just looking to add the dimension. So that's why I'm just adding little tiny pops of these brighter pieces with the lightener. You can see I am also diffusing that line, not taking it completely all the way up. I'm just kind of stroking that lightener up to diffuse that line of demarcation because I want a nice grow out. And I also only want to be able to just tone her every eight to 10 weeks or even eight to 12 weeks whenever she's kind of needing it. And then we can easily bring up these little baby lights 
ever so often whenever she's ready to kind of brighten up her overall look or we could go back in with color as well and, and brighten it up that way so it's kind of going to be up to her on what she decides when she returns but overall it's going to be a super low maintenance look so the trick to this is again stroking that lightener up towards the root area to create a soft line of demarcation what i decided to do for this look is add in more low light than high light. So the ratio of low light is basically two low light for every one baby light that I'm putting in with lightener. So sometimes less is more. So just kind of keep that in mind when you are trying to add little pops. Sometimes adding those pops here and there actually create a much more stronger impact, but still keeping it low maintenance and creating the dimension that your client is seeking. So just because your client says that they want something dimensional and they want to see a lot of highs and lows doesn't necessarily mean that they want a ton of foils in their hair. For the entire back section, I'm using the roundness of her head. So they're all kind of like halo shaped sections, slightly diagonal and slightly horizontal at the same time, creating the most seamless blend and overall brightness with maximum dimension. So basically I have about 10 foils here in the back and now I'm gonna move towards the front and I'm gonna isolate the, out that money piece area. She wears her hair right down the middle and I'm taking out about an inch and a half to two inches of the money piece towards the front of her hairline. And I'm gonna keep that a little bit separate because I'm gonna do some really deep teasy lights with that. So that's actually the first thing that I'm gonna do before I focus on that interior. And it's just mostly because I wanna kind of get it out of the way. And the best way that I find to do this is to find out exactly where the hair naturally wants to live. You kind of see when I brought that hair forward, it naturally parted right where the arch of the eyebrow is. Now, because she has pretty low density on this particular side, I went ahead and took this entire section and teased it all the way up. So this was actually a perfect section to demonstrate what a true teasy light should look like because she has lots of different growth patterns here in the front. So you can tell that her maximum amount of density is towards the back. That's why it was much more difficult to tease. But the front here was super easy and I do want the maximum amount of brightness going on. So that's why I decided to use the lightener instead of the color. So all of the lightener is living mostly on the exterior. And again, that's typically because most people wanna see the maximum amount of brightness around their face area. I decided I'm gonna leave that very top section last cause I'm gonna marry the center two pieces together since she does split her hair right down the middle. And now I'm gonna work on the rest of the interior on the side. So everything here is gonna be completely horizontal. I want the maximum amount of brightness. This is why I'm going horizontal in these sections. I talk a lot about this in most of my videos, but if you have not checked out the four foil placements video, you need to check that out because it's really gonna change the way you apply your highlights and the direction you put them in because you're gonna fully understand the effects that it creates. So if you wanna check out that video, be sure to check it out at the link above or down below. For this side section, I'm adding in three deep, unevenly weaved teasy lights, and then I'm gonna apply the color, so that's 7GV with the 40 vol. And again, this is because I want lots of dimension. I'm not looking for a ton of brightness. And then after I'm done with that third foil, then I'm gonna put in just one little tiny baby light and it's gonna be a lot closer towards the top. And this is what's gonna marry that money piece that we added in with the lightener. So be really you know, purposeful with exactly where you're putting in your color versus your lightener or if you're using two or more colors when doing highlights. So everything has a purpose. I wanted to keep the interior really dimensional and I keep saying that word, but just natural highs and lows. So this is what's gonna keep her overall hair still looking like hers. But the little added pop of blonde is just gonna kind of poke out from within a few inches below where she naturally parts her hair, which is right down the center. Now I didn't have a lot of help filming this except for the very beginning with Lisa, but this is a really good close up shot that I was able to capture on my own, really showing you exactly how we have a very diffused 
line of demarcation. We're not going to have a harsh line here. So it's going to make it really easy and simple when we get ready to tone. And a little key point here is make sure to trifle. That's a really key point here. You don't want to take all of that lightener that is living on the ends and push it right towards the top of the root. So now you can see right here, even though the lightener is living pretty close up towards the top, this is where I'm going to add a TZ light now with the color. So the color is going to live right on top of the blonde. So this is a little different and opposite of what typically people do, but I don't want to create a lot of brightness on her part line. This is what's going to keep it low maintenance. And in addition to the tease is going to keep it nice and rooted, giving that grow out kind of look and feel to the overall look that we're trying to achieve. So for the very top section, you know how it was split in the middle, I married those two pieces together. I decided to go ahead and put them together to create one entire section because she parts it down the middle. It makes it a lot easier and her hairline isn't uh, a widow's peak or anything like that, so it makes it really simple. Plus, we are going to make this still kind of rooted. So I decided to push the hair back, weave those pieces down, tease them, and still create that soft line of demarcation, not taking the lightener all the way to the root. That is the key here. This is what creates that softness. And basically I'm gonna put in just three highlights right here on this top. And you can even see here on the left side towards the bottom for that money piece, she had higher density. So I did decide to add in two TZ lights, but I kept some depth still in between. So I do want to note that because on one side she only has one foil and the other side she has two. So there's definitely a reason for that. I was just kind of working around the different types of density that my client had. So definitely keep those things in mind, you know, really analyze exactly, you know, how much highlight you have to put in. Cause sometimes people have more hair on one side than the other. So you kind of have to adjust for that. So we didn't want to add too much blonde to one side so we have to balance it out and we have to sometimes do that with the type of technique that we're adding in so overall i have a total of three foils this last one is a tz light just to keep it a little bit more rooted but those first two are just really tiny micro slices and brought up a little bit higher but still not all the way to the root so again keep that in mind exactly the placement that you're trying to achieve i wanted a graduation from closer to the root to a little further weight from the root right there on her part line but i'm still keeping some hair just a little bit of her natural to kind of fan over the rest of her hair just a little added tip is make sure your client's comfortable while they're processing. So I just kind of like comb all those little baby hairs away. So while she's sitting there, make sure to ask her if she wants something to drink, if she needs her glasses back on, and just keep her comfy. Um, this side she had a little bit more hair, so I had to put in two foils and I did take out some here for the density. Um, and then this side she has a little bit less uh, density on the side, so Elaine had to put the one. So we're just going for balance here, but just three lightener foils here, and then finished off with the two color ones right here. And yeah, let's let this process for about 25 minutes, and then we're gonna get ready to shampoo her out. This was after about 20 minutes, so I decided we were almost there, but she needed a little bit extra time to cook right here in the front. So I put the foil back on and then proceeded it to remove all of the lightener foils in the back. And the way I was able to identify those is because I had trifolded those. So those were the shorter foils. So there was a purpose and a reason why I flat wrapped some of my foils and then folded or trifolded some of them. So here I just started removing them. I put my bleach blenders on. They're these really fuzzy gloves from Framar. I'll actually link those down below as well so you can kind of see exactly what they are but they're kind of like towels for your hands really and it just takes all the lightener off very easily so just keep in mind when the lightener is not on the hair it's not hydrated it basically dries out and it stops processing but we got a great lift for trying to tone her to a level six seven so after she was done processing, I would say we had those foils in for a total of 30 minutes. I took her back to the shampoo bowl and just removed all of the foils. You can see how beautifully she lifted. I'm actually really excited at this point because the color's looking so gorgeous and 
the lightener pieces lifted so evenly and pretty because again she's got virgin hair i mean what a what better canvas could i possibly work on all right i'm so excited it lifted so beautifully especially like the little um I'm whispering a little bit because there's people like getting shampooed and they're relaxing right now, doing relaxing massages. But the blonde pieces looked so pretty. I'm so excited. So I am going to go in with the 7B and a little bit of 6BC in my formula. I decided I'm going to put it in a bottle. So that way I can kind of really get in there. She has a lot of hair. And I don't want to spend too much time like sectioning through it with like a bowl and the brush. So I'm just going to use this bad boy. I really don't need to do a shadow root or anything like that. So I'm just going to go in directly with the color at the bowl. So right now I have like a towel sitting on her hair just to kind of soak up a lot of the water. So I want the hair to be just damp, not soaking wet. And the 7GV that we put on with 40 ball lifted so beautifully as well. It's honestly a gorgeous color. I'm excited to see all of the dimension and then finish her off with a haircut. So let's go ahead and mix this up. So there's a little trick to this bad boy if you are going to use a bottle to do your cream toner. Okay, so I still put it on the scale and I want to make sure it's nice and leveled out. I am going to use the dedicated nine volume developer. I'm for sure gonna do about an ounce and a half of my color. So we're gonna do one uh, ounce of my 7B, half ounce of the 6BC. I find sometimes the bottle does go a long way because I'm really able to get in there a lot easier inside of each of the, like the root area, especially with the client, depending on how thick their hair is. So I don't know, I kind of toss between the bowl and the bottle to be completely honest. And then the 6BC, we're only going to do a half an ounce. And now I'm going to use the dedicated developer. So since we have an ounce and a half, we're going to add three ounces of this. And... Now there is a little trick to this. You're going to put your screw this bad boy on squeeze it and then shake it really good and it mixes up perfectly this is just my little trick on how i apply toner right out of the bottle even a cream like the kenra demis so first i globally get it on and then i take the bottle's nozzle and then just start running it right through on the roots about an inch apart and this is perfect technique for someone who has really thick dense hair like my clients from here i just use my hands to really work it through and make sure i have even saturation and distribution of my product i let her only process for about 15 minutes right at the bowl room temperature she was able to relax in these really comfy bowls yes they are comfy and then i did a thorough rinse and then treatment and then took her back to my station and proceeded to give her a haircut. So remember in the very beginning, I just kind of did a really quick hack, but because my shears are so freaking amazing, it actually cut her hair pretty straight for me. So I didn't really have to take off too much from the ends. I just basically cleaned it up. So I was able to just kind of shape it up by removing an additional half an inch. And I made sure to give her a nice even cut throughout the entire back section with some long layers. Now, I normally don't do hair cutting videos, so I didn't film the entire cut for this client because honestly, I don't even think I have not one hair cutting video on my YouTube channel. But if you would really love to see some hair cutting tutorials from me, let me know down below in the comments. And now for the big reveal. So just let me give you a little preview of her before. Check that out. Super long, 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 long hair. And here is her after. Okay, seriously though, tell me you're not obsessed with the dimension. She literally asked me for natural. Like she wanted it to still look like her hair. And I think I nailed this. She was so freaking happy. And you can even see like these little money piece uh, highlights kind of poking through on the sides. We got those little pops of blonde kind of poking through. But overall, that 7GV in monochrome, holy cow, with the one-to-one -one with 40 vol, 
that is the color that I'm absolutely obsessed with, but the little pops of blonde just kind of add the little extra touch. So now that we kind of see the back and you see the length that we cut off, let's take a look at the front, check out that money piece. And you can see the little bit of that 6BC, that little bit of brown copper and that seven brown kind of poking through. It looks super natural and just so beautiful on her. She just, like I said, absolutely loved it. She, the first thing she said, she was like, oh my gosh, like it looks different, but it still looks like me. And honestly, that was the best compliment because someone who has virgin hair, they're like typically deathly afraid to get their hair color done. So I think I achieved her goal and I achieved my goal, which was to make her happy. She loved it. And I'll see her in about 10 to 12 weeks for a little touch up and glaze. All right, so this wraps up this video. I really hoped you enjoyed this hair tutorial. And if you did, please give this video a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe and be sure to find me on my other social channels like Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok, all under Morella Manelli. And get on my email list if you want to be the first to know about any new courses, educational things, or maybe you want to be a model for one of these YouTubes. Make sure you head on over to morellamanelli.com or head on over to the little model sign up list and you will see your beautiful glorious face on my channel if you want more behind the scenes of what it takes to make these videos and see hair tutorials before they even come out to the public you can join me in my membership right here on the youtube site don't forget to listen to my podcast called hair bnb which is also on youtube now but i'm gonna be making more video forms so i'm really excited for that channel all of the links to everything on how you can learn from me grow from me maybe you want to learn more about how to market yourself as a hairdresser, I also have a mastermind group, so many different avenues on how you can work with me. All the links are down below. So make sure you share this video with a friend, give it a like, and I will see you in the next video.